What's up guys? Welcome to the GC Journey. Here before you is the first ever TurboSmart Gen 4 Raceport blow-off valve to 0207 WRX STI top mount intercooler adapter in the world. Now in this video I wanted to share with you the process, a little behind the scenes of what it takes to create a part like this and I would like to share with you why I went through the trouble of creating a solution to a problem that's probably only I have. So a while back, I bought the Raceport 50mm blow valve to replace the TLQ 50mm blow valve that I had on the car at the time. And mainly because of size differences, I needed more clearance under the bonnet. And it seemed to be a good alternative. And I thought, since both blow valves were V-band flanges, they should be interchangeable. So I made a video, you may have seen it. I was going to swap out the teal blow valve with the Raceport blow valve. During filming that video, I discovered that there are male type flanges and female type flanges. The teal Q has a female type flange and the Raceport has a male type flange. What that meant was that the torque solution adapter that I had uh, for the blow valve, for the teal blow valve, um, would not suit TurboSmart blow valve and I shared that video on one of the GC8 owner Facebook groups and one guy pointed out that TurboSmart do offer a female type flange version of this blow valve. The thing is, doing my research before buying the blow valve, the way that TurboSmart worded the compatibility of the blow valve on their website, it wasn't obvious to me that it was a direct replacement to the blow valve uh, that I had, which, you know, I understand that most likely for legal reasons, they were very careful with the way they described what the purpose of the female type version is for. In any case, maybe I'm just too naive, but I missed it and I ended up ordering a blow valve, which apparently no one makes an adapter for. So the way I saw it, I had Three options, one, sell my blow valve to someone, buy the correct one and use the torque solution adapter that I already had. That is if they really do work together, I still can't 100% confirm what I've discovered. Option number two, cut the flange off the adapter that I had, uh, weld on the flange that came with the Turbo Smart, which for the clean look that I'm going for in the engine bay, I would prefer to avoid as many welded parts as possible if I can help it. Option number three, was creating my own CNC machined adapter. And the reason I decided to go down that path was because it seemed like the most exciting and interesting option, in my opinion. I've never created a custom part from scratch and I was curious about the process. I wanted to experience it for myself. Now, it's definitely not the simplest or most affordable option. Many people try to talk me out of it. And full disclosure, making a one-off CNC machine part is not cheap. It only becomes worth it financially if you do like a production run of at least 300 units. And I'm not a company and I do not have the capital or clientele to justify doing such a, such a thing. So I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go through the trouble if I were you, especially if you have a cheap alternative. So going with option number three, I collaborated with a friend of mine. His name is Daniel. He knows all about taking measurements, designing in CAD software, etc. And so the first step was taking all the measurements of the intercooler flange side. We used the torque solution adapter for this. I suppose the measurement that was most important to get accurate was the bolt spacing. My friend Daniel started copying the general shape using Using a pen and paper, very old school if you ask me, just the way I like it. Then it was a matter of putting some numbers on paper and start figuring out exactly what measurements Daniel needs in order to 3D model the part in the software. So things like measuring the bolt hole inner diameter, the center hole, and the adapter thickness. Then it was on to the weld on flange that came with the Raceport blow valve. This part was a bit tricky since there are all sorts of heights and angles that aren't the easiest to measure. Once Daniel was happy with all the measurements, he sent me home and said he would design the adapter in his spare time. Now, let's be honest, who here is married with children, working a full-time job and has spare time. So the following weekend, I came over with the GC and we tried test fitting the first 3D printed prototype. My initial reaction was that it's real, I can see it, I can feel it and the bolt fits perfectly, it's amazing. But when trying to test fit it, we noticed that some things weren't exactly right. So we had a look at the measurements on paper, compared it to the measurements in the software and found out that indeed one of the constraints Daniel set in the software affected some of the other measurements. The blow valve flange seemed to fit better but still 
not perfect. So again, I went home, Daniel corrected a few things in the 3D model, printed a new version, and I came over to do some test fitting. This time, looked like things were fitting better, both on the intercooler side and on the blow-off valve side. There were a couple more adjustments that were required, but nothing major. Once we were happy with everything, Daniel got me in touch with a supplier in China that provides uh, CNC machining services. They gave me a quote to have the part made of uh, 6061 T6 billet aluminium in black anodized finish shipped over to me for a price that I was willing to pay. It took about two weeks and uh, here before you is the final product. Uh, I'm super happy with the way it came out. It uh, looks beautiful, fitment is spot on and at the time of filming this video um, this currently is the first of its kind. So it's an amazing feeling, you know, to imagine something and then to see it to transform into, into something physical that you can hold, you can, you can see, you can feel. Now, did it take a long time? Yes. Was it an unnecessarily expensive solution to a problem that, you know, could have been easily solved? Yes. Um, but I enjoy the process and I like doing things my way. I like being a, di a bit different. This experience might have uh, given me the appetite to maybe try and create other parts, maybe more useful parts that others can benefit from. For example, there's the radium uh, brake master cylinder brace and fuel filter mount that used to be marketed for the GC chassis, but I heard that fitment wasn't 100% and so it's not marketed for the GC chassis anymore. It's currently marketed for the GD chassis only. So may maybe I could design a GC uh, brake master cylinder brace uh, that would work with the radium fuel filter mount, you know, just, just an idea. In general, I feel that anyone who makes parts for the GC chassis, um, it's admirable, I love these people and I fully support them because our platform needs, uh, needs people like these, unlike Subaru who has deserted us GC owners a long time ago. So, um, you know, just wanted to share this uh, cool small project with you. Uh, I'm currently waiting for my shoulder to heal. Uh, so I can get back to working on my GC. Uh, I accidentally partially dislocated it um, while I was at the gym. I know, uh, serves my right for doing something stupid like going to the gym at age 37. But um, all the parts that I need to assemble the, the long block and, and put everything back together, uh, everything has arrived. So hopefully I'll be back uh, to my old self in about uh, two weeks, give or take. And so, um, that is all for this episode, so um, thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you in the next one.